So hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chef Tanya Brandt. What I'm going to do today, I was inspired by some of the writings by A.C. Parker, who was a Seneca Nation um, anthropologist. So in his book, one of the things he talks about is popcorn. And what I'm going to do today is kind of show you what I thought he was talking about when he talked about the particular dish which he called popcorn pudding but then after that I want to take that a step further and kind of give it the chef treatment and give you my rendition of a popcorn pudding so if you like what you're seeing here today be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to uh, be notified of new content <music> So Arthur Parker was a Seneca Nation anthropologist and he did most of his um, commentary on Haudenosaunee lifestyle and culture uh, around the time of the turn of the century. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take some of those that commentary that he used and we're actually going to work with popcorn. I'm going to take it, I'm going to pulverize it, make it to a flour and we're going to make it into almost like a custard and we're going to bake it off and we're going to make a real corn pudding out of this pudding, out of this popcorn. So we're going to get started here and we're going to get started with making our own popcorn flour. Um, if you're interested in making your own stove top popcorn, I actually have another video that we can link into this and um, so if you just want some encouragement on making your own stove top popcorn which I really recommend for doing this and not using um, like microwavable popcorn or nothing because there's already flavors and stuff added so this popcorn um, it doesn't need to be treated at all just even just air pop popcorn if you have one of those makers you can use one of those as well so I'm just filling up my um, electric traditional mortar and pestle because <laughs> I think everybody has a magic bullet if you don't you should get one they're great <laughs> So I'm going to take that and this is what we're going to use that to blend up our, our flour for this. Okay, so I have about two cups here now um, of the pulverized popcorn flour. And I'll show you that. So now we're going to get ready um, to make our custard base. So get my heat going here. Um, so I'm using about two and a half cups of any type of nut milk that you um, that you prefer. So I'll have our preferences. So we want to make sure you're eating uh, something that you like. And we're just going to let that heat up. I also have a quarter cup of maple syrup, and that's going to help sweeten that nut milk. And also with a lot of things that you're boiling, you generally want to put a nice pinch of, uh, of salt in there. So probably about a quarter um, teaspoon of that. Um, and I also am going to put a piece of uh, some fresh vanilla that I just got from uh, my buddy, um, Chef Rick Paulus. He brought that for me from Mexico. So I was super excited to get that this morning. And we're just going to let that come to temperature. You don't have to let it come to a rolling boil or anything like that. We're just kind of... Um, bringing it up to temperature and with that vanilla in there it's just going to seep through and get nice and lovely and you don't even need it on too high either. So while that's going on I'm going to um, do a bit of my egg mixture because we need to temper the eggs before we put it, them together. So in this bowl I have another quarter cup of maple sugar that I had already put in here or sorry maple syrup. And I'm going to use three whole eggs. If you're doing something like a traditional creme brulee, it, it's made with the yolks, but I don't want to waste my eggs. These are from my chickens. So, and this is our custard. So this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> so I'm going to beat these up just until they start getting nice and a little bit lighter colored. And then we're going to end up going back and forth with it. So tempering a little bit of egg and then pouring a little bit of the warm nut milk in there because we don't want to scramble our eggs. You're just going to do it back and forth just to temper it and so it doesn't break up on you. And this is already getting 
kind of warm. I can see the vanilla beans coming out. Those nice little black specks there. That's the the vanilla bean releasing its magnificentness. <laughs> so this vanilla bean was actually brought from Mexico from my my friend Chef Rick Paulus. He just got back from there and he brought me a gift which I was really happy to receive. It was very lovely of him for thinking of me. Um, you can also make your own um, vanilla extract as well. That's something I like to do. I'll just take um, just like regular vodka, put it in a container that I can seal, throw in a vanilla bean and just leave it and let it sit on its own for about six months and then it comes out um, just this awesome vanilla extract because the vanilla, best vanilla you get is going to be from Mexico. Hands down, doesn't matter where it's from, it's, it's going to be the best. And it's, to me, it's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> So this is just getting up to temperature now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my popcorn now and I'm gonna add it to this and get it in there and it's gonna get it nice and saturated. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is because I want that popcorn flavor to all come out. So, got that in there. And just push it down, let it do its thing. Like any popcorn, once it touches any liquid, it's kind of disappears. <laughs> So we got that in there and that's why we want that in with that warm nut milk to get it just to help extract those flavors and then in the end what we're actually going to do is strain all of these bits out. Um, you could leave it in if that's your preference um, but because it's pulverized popcorn it still has the little pieces of the shell in there and that might not be very nice mouth feel so we will um, strain it to make our, uh, our little custards. Okay so um, this is nice and warm now, so I'm going to turn the mixture off here and we're going to temper our eggs because you can't just throw it into the other container um, because you'll scramble them. So what we're going to do is just pour a little, little shot in there and mix it up. And you're going to do that three or four times. What that does is it slowly raises the temperature of the eggs so they're not congealing like scrambled eggs. It'll, you'll come out with a nice um, velvety texture. So tempering is a really crucial um, part to this. We are going to strain it after though um, to take out any bits that may have, have uh, scrambled and also to remove the uh, the shells and bigger particles of the popcorn and to remove the vanilla and the vanilla bean. Okay, so everything's in there now. And you can see it's a nice frothy mixture. So you don't have to mix it a ton, but I'm just doing it because it's helping it cool down. And to use another surprise, <laughs> um, I'm actually going to cook this in an instant pot. So I'm going to do that, just um, I don't have a, a stove in the studio here, but with all the popular Instant Pot recipes going on, uh, I thought it would be fun to encourage people to get that equipment out of their cupboards and dust it off and try it out. So I'm doing these over top of um, the ramekins, but obviously a lot easier way would have been to do it over a bowl. <laughs> but I didn't bring an extra bowl with me today. <laughs> so we're getting all of this in there. You can see I'm just straining it out. There's quite a bit of pulp from the popcorn, so I'm getting there, almost full. You can just see I'm straining that through. And the pulp, you can always take that, throw it outside, throw it in your garden, throw it in your compost. Now we have all of our, our strained ramekins here. So these two are strained and this one I just did with the original mixture just for science sake. I want to see how it turns out. Um, I strained it using cheesecloth. You could use a, a metal fine mesh strainer if you would want. And also I would suggest doing it over a bowl, not over these like I did, but um, I kind of forgot some equipment today. So we're going to take these and like I said, we were going to cook it in the instant pot. So this is a pressure cooker. Um, what's recommended is to use about seven minutes um, timing wise on it to cook. Um, traditionally to cook a custard like this you would cook it in a bain-marie which is a baking sheet and boil some water and put about an inch of water in the bottom and then put the ramekins inside so that steam actually helps it bake and give it that custard like um, consistency. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these ramekins and we're gonna cover them with tin foil. Um, just being in the instant pot, I'm a little nervous of um, extra moisture getting in there and I don't want them to not, um, not develop properly. So I'm gonna do that and get all of these into the instant pot. So yeah, so Instant Pot, when you're cooking with it, I say seven minutes, but it takes uh, quite a few minutes to come up to temperature. And that's when the little pin goes up. That's when the, the timer starts is when it's up to temperature. So really what it'll be is probably about a 17 minute maybe cooking process. If you wanna do this in a bain-marie in your oven, you wanna set your oven for about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's gonna take about a half an hour, 35 minutes to cook. Okay, our little custards, our little corn puddings are in there now. So we're gonna get the lid on that. I have this set, um, if you haven't used Instant Pot before. So I'm gonna pick this steam option and then just go down a bit and you can see you get that set to seven minutes. And we'll put the, the top on and it'll be all set and ready to go. And that little song lets you know that it's closed properly and you also want to have this to sealing it's a sealing and venting so it has to be sealed and that's what will make this little pin come up and that's when you know that the uh that it's on and working correctly okay so it's on and set it forget it <laughs> okay so i turned this off and i'm just gonna open the venting but I let it sit. Okay, all right, the vending went down on its own, so that's good. The pins dropped, so we're ready to open this now. Um, you really wanna make sure that that happens, especially if you're using the Instant Pot, cause you don't wanna, you know, explode everything in your kitchen. So, we can open this now. Okay, it's nice and steamy. So that environment that it makes, that warm steam, that's what really helps get that custardy kind of consistency that you want with a dessert like this. I um, hope I can touch it without hurting myself. Okay. I would really suggest using like a tea towel. When you're a chef, you kind of burn your hands and don't really, hot stuff doesn't bother you anymore. So, but they are really hot. So we're gonna take these lids off and see how, oh, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> so you can see that nice congealed consistency. This is the one that has the, um, the stuff in it. See, I can put, it's like a jello consistency. So um, before we finish these and we brulee the tops, I'm gonna throw them into the fridge. Um, you really want to let them cool down and help them set up. All right, so we're gonna take these, we're gonna put them into the freezer and we're gonna let them cool down and chill out for a little bit and then we're gonna come back and brulee the tops. And we're back and we have our ramekins. We got them out of the fridge and they're nice and set up and jiggly and I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's exactly what I was envisioning. So I'm really happy that I was able to, uh, to do that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some maple sugar. This is actually from my buddies at Zebuing Farms and they are on Facebook. And I believe they have a website as well if you would like to look that up. They do awesome uh, maple products. And so that's what I put in here. And we're just gonna take a spoon and we're gonna spoon on some of the sugar on top. And that's how we brulee the top. So, so a brulee is just a, uh, it just means like burnt. When you say creme brulee, it means like burnt cream in French. So that's what the, the brulee is, the burnt part. <laughs> so, and what you want is a nice layer on top and then we're gonna hit it with the blowtorch and we're gonna get that to uh, caramelize and it does it almost instantly. And you just get that so you get a nice little crack on top when you, when you uh, dive into your dessert. So creme brulee is a dessert that's one of my personal favorites. So that was really an inspiration for this um, making this corn pudding. All right, so now we're gonna hit it with the blowtorch. Hopefully I can start this properly. Oh, sorry, safety first. <laughs> okay, and you'll see when the flame hits it, it just kinda smokes up right away and it caramelizes and just makes this really nice little topping that's brulee on top.
So here we have our finished product. This is our creme brulee. So we're gonna give it a little crack test that we have um, that you would normally see on a traditional creme brulee. So we'll see how it goes. I like that sound. There she be, it's holding together. It's looking good. Um, what I like about an ice creme brulee is that jiggly texture, um, that slight sweetness to it, and that crunch you get, that when you're eating it and it's in your mouth, the crunch that you get from the sugar because it just like dissolves and just makes this really luxurious um, texture to it. And it's a really awesome dessert. Cause this is one of my personal favorites is, is creme brulee. So this popcorn pudding is definitely a, something fun that uh, to try. This is the one that had um, the popcorn bits in it that we left in there. So you can see there's a lot more texture to it. Um, it held up really well. It's not like jiggly, it's fairly solid. Um, so I wanted to try that too. <laughs> mm. You don't get the sharp like um, from the, the seeds in that. Um, I think that kind of baked out and softened. Um, but yeah, they both turned out really great and I'm really happy with what came out here today. All right, so here it is and it's really good. And I just want to thank Arthur Parker for his contribution to Haudenosaunee society and preserving our, our culture. And um, so I really enjoyed taking this uh, traditional Haudenosaunee recipe and making it and giving it some of the that modern uh, cooking technique and making it into a luxurious, savory indigenous dish. Thank you for joining me today. Um, you want to hit the like and subscribe button and follow Chef Tanya Brandt and the notification bell so um, you can be the first to know when any new content is uploaded. And thank you for joining me today. Ona. Mm -hmm.